Hi, welcome back to ODE YouTube channel. Today I'm here for that kind of very long video which I make every month called Pens for the Month. Today I'm showing you the pens for November, however we are already in December. I tried to make these videos in the beginning of the month but I had no chance of doing it and I decided that I wanted to do it anyway even if I do it now in December but I will show the pens that I had inked for most of the past month so let me show you I'm going to show you 23 pens that were inked and you will will stand will stay here just a little bit showing you the pens and the inks I've been using and I hope that in December I can find a way to put these pens for the month a little bit earlier. So let's start. The first pen that I want to show you is this pen. This is a pen that I'm really liking a lot. I don't love the color. I said here many times that I don't like burgundy, but this pen is really good. And this is a Parker pen. You can see it by the clip. So let me write first here, this is pens for November 2021. And the first pen is the Parker Massima Duofold in Burgundy. The nib on this pen is the beautiful gold nib, 14 karat gold nib with the arrow and here is the feet. So beautiful large nib, not very very big but a large nib and I would say this is maybe a fine and the ink it has inside is a very, it's a classic that I really like which is the Parker Quink Black. This pen is so, so smooth. I love to write with it. You can try to force some line variation, but there is not much. I don't think Parker is well known for having lots of line variation with their pens, but this is really, really a nice pen. So let's move on and show you the next pen. And the next pen is a pen that I showed you, I, I think I showed you all these pens before, maybe except... I'm not sure, maybe I showed them all. Uh, with an, at least with unboxings and some other videos, pen tips and Instagram posts, maybe I, I think I showed them all. So the next one is this, this is the Rotring 600 in black which is a nice pen, it has a defect there, the barrel, despite being in metal, it broke, it was fixed by the seller and I could, because of that uh, flaw, I could buy it at a very low price, it also had this little ring missing, so I put a new ring there and now the pen is working, great. So, this is the rot ring. 600 in black. It is a nice heavy pen made of metal with a faceted hexagonal barrel which is really really nice. And it has this knurled grip section which is also fun. And this one has a medium steel nib like this, oops, focus, medium there, nothing on this side and nothing on top. Still nib and the ink it has inside is Visconti Red and the nibs by Rotring are always very inexpressive but I think they are made like engineer pens. They are not made 
they are made to work, to write, not to make calligraphy. That's my opinion. So they are very simple, but rotary nibs are always good, despite being very simple. The next pen I will show you is a pocket pen. It is the Sailor. A Sailor pocket pen. I don't know the real name of this specific model, but it is a pocket pen by Sailor. It is a nice one. So let's call it Sailor Pocket Pen. This one has a fine nib and it has, let me show you the nib. Here you can see it. It is a 14 karat gold nib, which is marked Sailor in the other side. A very small one, very thin, and it has lots of feedback on paper. A pleasant one, like a pencil, but they have feedback, as usual with uh, Sailor nibs. And the ink is also Parker Quink. Black. It is a, an ink that I like a lot, so I never feel bored about it. And this pen writes really well with a lot of feedback and you can have some line variation, which is kind of fun, but I don't search for that usually. So, one sailor pen and let's go to the other sailor pen. By the way, I'd like to say when, where, I, where I am traveling. So, I'm not really traveling myself, but from where the pens came. The first one, the Parker Massimo Dufold, came from the UK. The Rotring from Germany. This one, the Sailor Pocket Pen from Japan. And this beast, much bigger than the Pocket Pen, came also from Japan. It's also a Sailor. And I, you've been seeing this pen a lot, I love it. This is the Sailor, one of the most expensive pens I have. It is Sailor King of Pen Profit Model in color dark champagne with a medium 21 karat gold nib. I think it may be running out of ink because it railroaded a little bit there and the ink it has inside is Mont Blanc Daniel Defoe which is discontinued I already have a replacement ink for it but not still in use yes and I think the level let me check here next to the light yes the ink level on the on the converter is low, so I think the... or I need to to adjust the... to bring the piston of the converter down, just to put a little bit more ink into the section, or I need to refill it, because it's not skipping, but starting to railroad, and it, it usually doesn't do that. This ink is wonderful, no longer available, but there are nice replacements. The next pen is from Germany and we are staying in Germany for a while because this is a Caveco and I have lots of Caveco pens inked. This one is inked almost always and I use it very little because this pen stays mostly in a Maxpedition micro pocket organizer in my backpack and it's like a a reserve pen. It's there if I need something just or just to bring that small pouch and I don't use it that much. It's there and it doesn't dry. This is an amazing pen, although very small, but it's heavy made of copper. This is the Caveco Lilliput in copper with a fine steel nib focus please yes fine steel nib and it has inside something that I don't know what it is it is an ink mix that sometimes I make when I am emptying some cartridges and you can see there is not lots of line variation that we can have from these kind 
of Nib. But it is really a nice pen that I like. I like the patina it got with time, so I'm really happy with that. And now we jump from the small Lilliput to the girthier Supra, which can also be longer if I put that extender, but I don't use the steel Supra with the extender because I think I like to have it in a pocket size, although for these I need to post it to be able to write with it comfortably because it's already almost the same size as the Lilliput. However, it's girthier, as you can see, and instead of the number 5 nib, it has a big number 6, which is very, very nice. And so, what we have here is the Caveco Supra in steel with a fine nib and the ink. The nib is like this, with Caveco logo, with fine, with F for fine. It's a very good Bock nib. And this pen has kind of a mystery. I didn't figure it out yet. I didn't try also. It should have Waterman South Sea Blue, which is the Waterman Turquoise with the older name. But this, this bottle is old. This one you can have more line variation than with the number 5 nib in, in the Supra, in the Lilliput. Um, I, I have this ink and the ink is old. So, but the ink is, has not this color, it is a turquoise and here it looks more green. So, one of two things happened. Or the color changed with time and the ink is not good anymore. Okay, it's good for use, but maybe it's not good in, its, in all its properties. Or I messed up and I think I inked it with Waterman and I inked it with something else. I'm not sure, I didn't check the bottle yet, but maybe the, bot, the ink went bad and so the, the color is wrong. We'll have to see it. The next pen I have is a Caveco Special. This one is made of brass and is one of two Caveco Special pens. These pens are long with a pencil-like feel, however, they are heavy, because this one is made of brass. So, the Caveco Special in Brass. This one has a fine steel nib, again, a nib like the nib on the Supra, and inside it has Pelican 4001 brilliant red and this nib is a little finer than the nib on the Lilliput but you have the same kind of line in them so uh, it's finer but you have the same kind of writing experience although it's a little finer the next pen I have is also a Supra uh, sorry also a special and here it is next to the other one but this one is a special one. This is the Caveco Collection Special. So, the Caveco is releasing the Caveco Collection and in November they, they released two new colors, one in the Sport model, the other one in the Special Edition for the Special model. And this one is a pen made of aluminium, so much lighter than the brass one that I showed you. And it has gold and and gold gold colored ends and gold colored section with a gold plated nib. This one is an extra fine. And let's write with it. This is the Caveco Special. No, not Caveco Special, sorry. It's called Caveco Collection Special red. It's something interesting. The finer the nib is, the more I tend to make like a cursive writing. With an extra fine nib and the ink inside is the beautiful, already also discontinued, Mont Blanc, William, 
Shakespeare. And this is an extra fine nib. Not a not lot of line variation, and if you press harder to have line variation, it's not pleasant because it digs a little bit into the paper because it is an extra fine. Beautiful pen, very Christmas color. So, if you want to give a Christmas card to somebody special and want to have also a nice pen, this pen will go perfectly with Christmas or even with Valentine's Day. The next pen is also released from this year from Caveco, and it is a Caveco student, which with this kind of uh, ivory white, and with this fuchsia, strawberry, uh, raspberry color there. And this pen is the Caveco student. And this color is called 30s Blues because the student series has names of musics. And this one has a broad. It's not my favorite, but it's nice to have some variation. It, it has a broad gold nib, 14 karat gold nib. This nib doesn't come with a pen. I added, I added it later. And it is a very nice, interesting writing experience. However, it's not my favorite one because it's too big for my handwriting. But it shows well this ink. And this ink is Pilot Hiroshizuku Yama Budo. And yes. With this, you can have some line variation, and if you press too hard, it may even leak too much ink into the paper. So, I refilled this pen a little bit ago, so I guess too much ink. Let me just take some ink out. Um, it, as I told you, I just inked it again. So now it's behaving a little better, but again, a lot of ink on paper. And this is failing on me a little bit. It's strange, but I guess maybe there is still too much ink into the inside the section and in the feed. And when I press it too hard, it tends to leak a little bit. I guess it will not happen if you write regularly, but pens are not made to be abused. This is not a flexi nib, it's just a soft gold nib, so you shouldn't do that as I did. And so if it did that, it was my fault, but it didn't do it before. It's, I think really it was because I inked it recently. The next pen that I have here to show you is another Caveco, and this is a discontinued one. This is a Caveco Elite, and not the vintage Elite, the modern Elite, which is a nice pen with a number six steel nib. There are, you can also buy a gold nib to put here. It is a nice full-size pen. This one takes a long international cartridge or converter, like the the student or the Supra with the, the extender or the special. And this is the Caveco Elite. This one has not been used uh, a lot recently because I'm having lots of work. I'm using <laughs> mostly the same pens. I have to say that I didn't adapt too well back to working on the office at the office so i think my perfect way my perfect way of working was at by uh, from home but now I, I i went back to the office and i think we'll stay there except for the first week of january where we will have uh, work from home but I've, i'm finding that adaptation very hard to make again and so I'm not being able to take care of all the pens, writing with them, making the videos that I wanted, I think. Uh, 
I'm still f trying to find myself after more than one year in working from home. Uh, it changed my mindset a lot. So let's see. This pen has Waterman South Sea Blue. And yes, as you may see, this ink is a little different from that. But this is not a real ink color also. This is a little darker because I've not been using this pen a lot and so I think it it evaporated a little bit and I'm, it's not writing in the true color. It's a little darker because of that. I think it has some ink dried on the nib. So this is my fault, not the pen's fault. It's me. You can see also that this nib allows for some more line variation than the, the, the number 5 nib. And except the number 5 nib made of gold there where you can have lots of line variation as you can see but with that mess. Now the Caveco collection, the other color, the Sport, this is the Cyan. In the other videos I called it Cyan because I'm no good at English. Uh, this one is also a cafe collection, so a limited run, and it is a very nice color. I think it's interesting. So this is the Caveco collection in cyan, the sport model. The nib on this one is a steel nib, but it is a double broad nib. What I can clearly see is that this nib is broad not double broad and at least in my opinion I would call it broad and it is a little less broad than the gold broad. The ink it has inside is Caveco Royal Blue so it's not really a match with the pen it's just the ink that came inside it and I decided to go that easy way. Very nice color, in my opinion. Now, the next pen is the last Caveco, so we are staying in Germany for a long time and it is this very special thing that Caveco sent me. So, this is an amazing pen to have in my hands. It's very expensive, really, really expensive. It depends, the price it can range from 1200 euros to, an, to much more in Portugal, it depends on the on the taxes and so on. It is a Cavex port made of silver. It takes all the fingerprints and you take all the scratches possible because it has a nice mirror finish. It is very, very heavy. 56 grams of silver, so a very heavy pen. It has a gold fine nib but rhodium plated, so it has the same color as the pen. So this is the Caveco Sterling Sport. I find this nib to have some feedback, which I'm not used in, uh, about Caveco. I will, I will need to see if there is any misalignment of the times. Maybe there isn't. Maybe it's just because it's a fine nib. I need to check it. Uh, but it's not unpleasant. It just has some feedback. So this is Sterling Sport with a fine gold nib. And the ink it has is Caveco Caramel Brown. The kind of feedback it has makes that kind of squeaking noise very um, it, it's not loud, but I can hear it when I write and I, I kind of like it, I have to confess. So, this is the kind of line variation if you abuse a little bit of your gold nib, but I don't advise you to do that. This is a very nice pen that Caveco sent me. This is kind of a grail pen for many Caveco collectors. And for now, I'm keeping it always in this pouch to avoid dings and scratches. Maybe 
in some time I don't feel that way anymore, but now I have to... I try to protect it. Now, finally, we'll stay in Europe, but we'll leave Germany. And I don't think I have another German pen until the end of the video. We'll go to Italy with this very nice purple pen. It is a Monte Grappa. So, this one is Monte Grappa Mia Cityscape for the store called Corsani. This one has a fine steel nib. Those beautiful nibs by Monte Grappa, which are Iovo nibs that have a different engraved, and I think they are tuned a little different. Uh, they are, these are very nice, comfortable pens. They have beautiful materials. I really, 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 really like this. The exposure is adjusted for the paper, so maybe you cannot see everything on this lighting on the pen. But they, there are several models now. I have two, and I can't afford them all. I wish I could, but that's life. Only pens, so. And the ink it has is Leonardo Officina Italiana Purple, which is a very nice purple that will allow for some sheening, golden sheen, but not really with a fine nib. So, very interesting pen by Montegrappa. The next pen is from Ireland and it is my pen with skulls that you already saw a lot of times here and this is my Gravitas Stainless Steel The Skull Edition with let me show you the nib a medium nib by Iovo. It is all made of steel, quite heavy, and it has this beautiful pattern engraved with the skulls and arabesques. I really like it. The skull edition with a medium steel nib and inside it has the gorgeous Mont Blanc William Shakespeare and let's see it's called also velvet red so it's a dark red but with a very wet medium nib it is almost brown with a extra fine nib much drier it is really a darker red so it's interesting to see how the same ink between the Gravitas and the Caveco collection special they are so different, the same ink. Now we'll go to France and we'll go to a Waterman. This is the Waterman Reflex. And it is a nice pen. Waterman Reflex. Let's call it marbled green with a fine steel nib, gold colored steel nib which is nice and the ink it has is Visconti green which is an ink that I would say matches well the feel of the pen not that I, I'm always trying to match the colors and the pens but I think the color of the ink with the color of the pen but sometimes it is fun and I think this is really a good match now this is getting a little long, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pens to go. So let's do it. The next one is from the United States and it is a Schiffer. Schiffer Legacy, which has this lined pattern. Beautiful nib. So this is Schiffer. Legacy 2. The model is called Linear Matte 
black with a medium, I would say, I would call it a medium, gold nib, 18 karat gold nib, it's beautiful, those, oops, these chiffre nibs are gorgeous, with chiffre script turquoise or turquoise, I'm not sure and you can have some line variation but I would not abuse a inlaid nib like this one and I would say that the Waterman South Sea Blue that I showed you before should look a little bit like this I usually can't distinguish between the chiffre script turquoise and the Waterman South Sea Blue but you can see clearly this one is not the same and this one is not the same so maybe ink is getting old and now one pen that I have as a loan from Luis from the inky nib and this is a Schiffer No Nonsense which is a fun model Schiffer No Nonsense in yellow I have to make the review of this one I didn't make it yet then to give the pen back to him but I think this is kind of a lost opportunity it's not lost because it was a very collectible pen but I it's hard for me to understand this pen is not around anymore there were some collectible pens that could be a success and this was at its time but I think it could still be Schiffer No Nonsense Cavec Sport Lamy Safari Parker Frontier, Waterman Culture. all those pens were very cheap, they could have lots of colors and I think they could be very collectible nowadays, but that's life. This is a medium steel nib that I showed you before, With, it has a very classic shape and it has a very nice ink that Luis gave me, also a sample and this is a very interesting ink, this is Diamine Makassar, which is a very, very dark brown. It really looks black. You can have lots of line variation. It's a very toothy nib, not butter smooth. So it has a very, it's very rigid. It has feedback, but not a, a, an as pleasant feedback as the sailor pens have, for example. Now, from the United States, we will jump back to Italy with my beautiful, wonderful writing, amazing pen, the Santini with its new nib, the white gold nib, which is not that white and it's not that gold, so it is a white gold nib, which is very nice, made in house. This pen with Ever Night Feed, this pen is really amazing. I just need to empty the pen when I have when I do it and to put some silicone grease there because some ink went between the, 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 the nib collar assembly and the section when I replaced the nib. So I think it was my fault. I should have put some silicone grease. So when it is empty, I will clean it and do that. But I, I find myself wanting to refill this pen instead of cleaning because it's an amazing writer. So this is the Santini, and now it's skipped because it was unkept. This is the Santini Libra Olive with a fine nib, which is really a fine nib, and it is a gold nib as I showed you, 18 karat gold nib, and the ink, it's also possible that it's running out of ink. As I told you, my pens don't I, I, I couldn't have much time to give them lots of maintenance, so some are mostly unused. KWZ Oscar, which is an exclusive for Fonto Plomo, and you can try to have some line variation, but you don't have much. And why, if this is a Santini nib? Because Santini makes flexi nibs but I don't like flexi nibs so I went for a rigid nib and that's what it is this is a rigid nib 
bouncy enough, not for line variation, very pleasant to hold, so to write with, very big pen, one of the best pens I have, I have to say that. And I really like to, to write with it. it, and it's a fine, this fine is fine. It's not one of those pens that I say, hmm, let's see if I, if I get lucky and I have a fine, fine. Okay. Five pens to go. Let's do them. Now we'll go to the east and we'll stay there. The first, the next pen I have here is a Pilot Silvern and this is the Koi or the Carp version, also called Koi. Now the pen has lots of scratches. It is a sterling silver pen, so it gets micro scratches. So this is the Pilot Silvern Carp, also called Koi, not officially, with a medium gold nib. This inlaid gold nib, rhodium plate, it is beautiful. I think you can see it. 18 karat gold nib. Very beautiful pen. Very well made. I will review it very soon. And it has inside the an ink that's very hard to say, Kyono Oto. And now I will write it, I will not say it. Number 10. So, fortunately, it has a number. You can have some line variation, but again, don't abuse inlaid nibs. This is a very beautiful nib and it's very big. You may not be aware of the size. I showed it several times, but look at the nib of a Schiffer. It's almost the same size, different shape. I think this pen is marvelous. It was expensive, but I got it almost for free. Thank you for the support of people on the channel, because I could buy it with the balance I have from Apple Boom. And the pen, I thought it would get some patina, and not yet. It just is not as shiny as it used to be. It's not kind of mirror polish. It's, it's getting dull. Maybe it will have some patina someday. I will not force it. Let's see what happens. The next pen, also a pilot. It's not a modern, it's, it's not a very modern one. I think it's from the 80s. It is a pilot. Let me see if I can show it to you with this lighting that is set for the writing. I think you can see there on the, on the cap lip. Costume 67. So, this is the Pilot, oops, Costume 67 with a medium gold nib. This nice looking nib. It's not a very big nib. It's a number, it's a Pilot number 5, which is different from, for example, Kaveco number 5. And it has inside Graf von Faber Castell Hazelnut Hazelnut Brown. My handwriting is very messy. I'm trying to work a little bit on the channel today, so this is a day off because it's national holiday. It's the day when Portugal was again uh, independent from Spanish in 1640. So it's a national holiday and it's I'm using the day to work on the Inkvent calendar videos and such. So this is a very interesting pen, the Pilot Costume 67. I went for a little trip in November, I have some days off and I used, there was another pen that I bought, I got almost for nothing from Apple Boom again, and this is this Pilot Costume 74 in Forest Green. Beautiful, nice pen. So the Pilot Costume 74 with, a, let's call the name, 
the forest green with not this with a medium gold nib this one number five nib and it has inside which ink does it have inside okay diamine ink vent calendar don't work don't worry this is not a spoiler from 2019 so it's not uh, the current one and this color is called mistletoe and this nib will allow for some line variation such as the nib on the 67 I will need to make the reviews of both pens and then a versus video because it will be interesting the pens are the same you can exchange caps and so so they are the same model just with small differences the 74 has this bigger cap band and this one has two thinner uh, rings when you uncap both pens you have a ring on the on 74 no ring on 67 and the nibs are please focus the nibs are almost the same some only some small differences on the way they are engraved but they are the same pen overall so I had to try to work on my theater play that I'm working on I wanted to have it ready at least the first draft completely written until next week so I will fail that deadline that I put myself but I think it was useful to be able to have two pens with the same writing experience just to exchange colors so I took it with me but I failed the writing part now I have a very small pen that I, I know that I have a, a viewer on the channel that really likes this pen this is a Pilot Petit 1 which is a very small pen this is an interesting one it posts very well it clicks on place so it's very well made it's pilot <laughs> a pilot is always well made so this is the pilot petit one in let's call it gray with a fine steel nib very simple nib like the nibs on the disposable pens it has that wick that, that that takes ink to the end of the of the section i think of the of to the tip of the of the feed i think it's how it works and it takes special pilot short cartridges it is a fun pen it works it works well and i decided to ink it because I had to do some experience, experiments also with the pen that I will show you next which will be the last so it was interesting and this one is the Pilot Blue ink cartridge it had inside so this is just a fine steel nib no line variation works well doesn't dry very well made very small I think if I used the clip a lot I could break it but very very small pen this is Kavek Lilliput it's just a little bigger but more comfortable because it is girthier than the Lilliput and finally the last pen it's this one this is the Mahjong or Moonman let me post it it's a chubby short pen this is the Mahjong Mahjong Q1 transparent and it's getting out of ink also so <laughs> I'm I'm a mess today sorry about that with a medium steel nib this is a Jin Hao steel nib it came with a Jin Hao nib but I changed the nib just to match the trim color and it has Schiffer Scrip blue ink inside it's getting out of ink so 
it will not write a lot, but I can still have some line variation. So it is a fun pen. It is an eyedropper pen, but I decided I would prefer it to be a cartridge pen. So you can see it's, it has no ink inside. This part there, which is dark, is the, the, the plug that ends the cartridge. So I really need to refill it. So this pen is an interesting pen. It is an eyedropper. I don't like eyedroppers. So I decided to turn it into a cartridge pen. I made a video with the instructions how to do it. If you want, just check that video. And if you find it interesting, it may be fun to see. So here you have my pen selection for November. November ended, as I told you, I could not meet my deadlines, but this is the, these are the colors that I chose. Mostly red, black, green, some blue. So not a lot of variation in colors, but that's what I could do. I have some other pens inked with the Diamine Ink Vent Calendar colors for 2021, but I cannot show them not to have the spoilers. I will try to make the daily videos of the Inkvent calendar, but I'm struggling with that. I don't have many complete now, so let's see if I can do it to the end of the of the until the Christmas day. I can do all the all the videos. I'm not sure. <laughs> I will try. I'll do my best. So sorry for this kind of messy video, but I wanted to really record this. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and keep, com keep, com back, keep coming back for more. And that's it. Please comment below if you want to ask something and I'll be back soon in another video. Bye.